Ephesians chapter 3 The body of Christ was a mystery 3 colon 1 dash 12 revealing the mystery of Christ. 3 colon 13 dash 21 prayer for empowerment to be filled with the fullness of God. 3 colon 1 for this cause I Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, for this cause is the fact that God is now building the body of Christ's side of the habitation of God. 2.22 Currently God is body building, not nation building, so Paul concentrates on our mystery side of God's habitation. Paul wrote Ephesians from Rome where he was on house arrest for two years, Acts 28 verse 30, and guarded by Roman soldiers. But he considered himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, not Rome. Two, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord, Paul knows that they have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given by Christ to Paul to them. Paul is responsible for dispensing God's instruction to his heavenly group. Christ from heaven made Paul his exclusive minister of the dispensation of grace. He appointed Apostle Paul to relay his new set of instructions to us in the church, the body of Christ for us to follow, 1 Cor. 917, Colossians 1 verse 25. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Rom. 1515, 16. Paul is God's steward of the information or wealth of his riches to us. Paul is the steward of the mysteries, 1 Cor. For colon 1, the rapture was another mystery exclusively revealed in Paul's letters, 1 Cor. 1551, both the dispensation of grace and the body of Christ began at Paul's conversion with an unprophesied appearing and ends with an unprophesied appearing of Christ, Acts 9 verses 15 and 16, 1 Thess. 4 colon 15 dash 17. We are living in a giant parenthesis between Christ's appearing to Paul and Christ's appearing at the rapture called mystery, which was inserted between prophecy on either side. All of the Bible is for us but Paul's. Thirteen letters Romans to Philemon are to or about us. Peter's prophesied group sold everything they had as commanded by Christ, Luke 12 verses 32 and 33, and prepared themselves to go through the tribulation. They would not be able to buy and sell because they were commanded not to take the mark of the beast, Antichrist, Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18. Five of the ten virgins went and bought oil for their lamps, which meant they had to take the mark of the beast, so they were not allowed to enter his kingdom, Matt. 25,1-13 But God interrupted Peter's group and delayed the prophesied tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, which surprised all the angelic hosts, especially Satan, the adversary, Dan. 9,24-27 God put Peter's group, Christ's earthly ministry, on hold in Acts 15, Gal. 2,7-9 God's plan for heaven is distinct from his plan for earth. The Lord Jesus Christ began a new heavenly ministry, the mystery, with a new apostle, Paul, with a new message, the gospel of Christ, in a new dispensation of grace, to a new audience, all people, to save a new agency, the body of Christ, using a new operating system, grace, not the law, with a new destiny which is heaven, 2 colon 6, 2 cor. 5 colon 1. In Acts 9, God made Paul the wise master builder, 1 cor. 3.10, God is the architect that gave Paul the blueprints for the construction of the church. The mystery was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, Rom. 16.25, 26a, the mystery has. A. New Apostle, Paul. New Gospel, the Gospel of Christ. New Dispensation, Grace. New Agency, the Body of Christ. New Audience, All People. New operating system, grace, not the law. New destiny, heaven. 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, for whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, Paul has received the full revelation of the mystery of Christ by the time he writes this letter. The Lord Jesus progressively revealed the mystery to Paul, Gal. 1 colon 1, 11, 12, 2 cor. 12 colon 1, Christ had let Paul know that by the time he reached Rome he would have the full understanding of the mystery. In his letter to the Romans Paul wrote, And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, Rom. 
1529, whereby, when you read God and Paul expect believers to read and understand my, Paul's, knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace. In contrast, the mystery of his, the Father's, will, 110, is that two groups of people are in Christ, but the kingdom on earth believers are not in the body of Christ, Matt. 1928. He wants the Ephesians to know the knowledge Christ made known to him. Notice the parenthesis in these verses. As I wrote afore in few words, Paul had either briefly mentioned the mystery in another letter to the Ephesians or he is referring to what he wrote concerning the mystery in Romans 16 verses 25 to 27 for all Paul's letters were copied and circulated. Some of Paul's letters are mentioned but not included in the canon of scripture because they were not inspired. Paul refers to another letter in 1 Cor 5 9 and his letters in 1 Cor 10 10 and Peter said Paul wrote a letter to his group in 2 Peter 3 verses 15 and 16. The mystery of Christ is the new revelation of his ministry to us from heaven through Paul to those who will live eternal in the heavens, 2 Cor. 5 colon 1, not on earth. 5 which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, a mystery in scripture a previously hidden truth now divinely revealed. The mystery was never revealed in other ages to the sons of men anywhere in the Bible until God revealed it to Paul to reveal to us. The mystery is my gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Rom. 16.25-27. Now Paul reveals the mystery of Christ that the church, the body of Christ, is one blood-bought group composed of both Jews and Gentiles being formed during the dispensation of grace, f. 3 colon 1 12, 619, Rom. 1625, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6 8, Colossians 4 verse 3, having the indwelling spirit of Christ, 316, 1 Cor. 316, 619, 20, Gal. 220, 4 colon 6, 1 Tim. 316, Paul said the mystery of Christ was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This chapter is the most profound and masterfully concise description of the mystery to the body and the last part of the doctrinal part of Ephesians. God kept his plan for the heaven a secret until Paul was saved. Paul's ministry is to the Gentiles, 3 colon 1, Acts 28 verse 28. Paul was apprehended and commissioned by Christ to be his apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 11 13, in Acts 9. Paul recounted his salvation experience in Acts 22 verses 1 to 21 and Acts 26 verses 1 to 32. The mystery is not about Gentile salvation in prophecy, because that was prophesied and not a mystery. It is about Gentiles being saved by directly believing on Christ apart from going through Israel. This mystery was not made known to mankind as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, Paul is our main apostle, and prophets, those who briefly had the gift of prophecy that ended in Act 28, by the Spirit. First, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit helped Apostle Paul to understand the mystery. Next, Spirit helped the body of Christ prophets in the early church to understand the mystery. Then, the Spirit helped Peter and John and other little flock apostles and prophets such as Judas and Silas, Acts 15 verse 32, to understand the mystery, Acts 15 verses 4 to 29, Gal. 2 colon 7 dash 9. Holy means set apart. Christ set certain secondary apostles apart to share the mystery to the Gentiles, Paul, Barnabas, Acts 14 verse 14, and Timothy and Silas, 1 Thess. 2 colon 6. The Schofield Bible note on F. 3 colon 6 says, the details concerning the doctrine, position, walk, and destiny of the church were committed to Paul and his fellow apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Unfortunately, Schofield was Acts 2, not Acts 9. Schofield cites Matthew 16 verse 18, just before his brilliant observation mixing Peter and Paul. Paul also made the mystery information known to Peter, John, and James, Acts 15 slash Gal. 2, but Paul is speaking of the body of Christ apostles and prophets, 
2.20-11 We do not have apostles or prophets now because we have the complete word of God, 1 Cor. 13.8-13 Paul was given advanced information about how God solved mankind's sin problem. God can give his son's righteousness to two groups of believers in heaven and earth. Peter's and Paul's groups are separate, but both are in Christ. The last book to be added to the Bible was 2 Timothy, whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, Colossians 1 verses 25 and 26. God kept his intention to form the body of Christ a secret from Satan. Satan knows the scriptures. By keeping his program for the church hidden, God prevented Satan from hindering his plan. Satan made sure that Christ died on the cross by entering Judas, Luke 22 verse 3, and by doing so sealed his own doom. If Satan had known God's plan, he would not have allowed Christ to be crucified. The thing that I could not see was the mystery, but the mystery has now been revealed by his spirit in us, to those who love him and want to know the truth so we can understand the deep things of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6 10, dot, 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise, Spirit, in Christ by the gospel, it was a mystery that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, joint heirs with Christ, Rom. 817, and in the same body in Christ with the Jews, 2 colon 6, 2 15, 18. God has made both believing Jews, individuals like Paul, not the nation, and Gentiles, like the individual Ephesians, one, by placing them into the same body, or group. This can be illustrated by taking two dolls, representing a Jew and a Gentile, and placing them into a plastic bag, representing the body of Christ. In this new group, the Gentile believers are on equal footing, and not less than the Jews, Gal. 328, Colossians 3 verse 11. Every member of the body of Christ are partakers of that Holy Spirit of promise, 113, Gal. 314, 16, the Spirit of His Son into you hearts, Gal. 4 colon 6, by faith in the gospel of Christ, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1 verse 27, dot, 7 whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. 8 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Paul was made a minister of the gospel of Christ according to the gift of grace, the gift of the apostolic office, and the effectual working of his power. The power comes from the Son's Spirit in us working by using His living word rightly divided, 1 Thess. 2.13, 2 Tim, 2.15 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, Rom. 11.13, Paul was made a minister to dispense the grace of God, a steward of God's wealth to the body of Christ. Ministering the gospel that saves sinners today so the believer can receive the Spirit of Jesus Christ in them. Christ's power was working in Paul by grace, Rom. 1 colon 5, 15 15, 16, 1 Cor. 3 10, 15 16, 1 Tim. 1 colon 11 17. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles, Gal. 2 colon 8. It was by God's grace that he made Paul his apostle. Notice that the grace given to Paul is his knowledge of the mystery, save Jews and Gentiles to live in one body in heaven, which he preaches by the effectual working of his power, 3 colon 7. The working of God's power, his spirit, and Paul helped him to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. His spirit in us quickens us, makes our mortal bodies alive to serve him, Rom. 
12 colon 1. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Wrong. 8 11. Paul said he is less than the least of all saints because before his salvation, he persecuted the kingdom on earth saints, little flock, Luke 12 verse 32. Acts 8 colon 1, 9 colon 1. He led the rebellion against the Church of Jesus of Nazareth, Israel's true Messiah. Then he blasphemed the Holy Ghost when he was a present and consented to the stoning of Stephen, Acts 7 verse 58, 1 Tim. 1 colon 11 dash 14. Paul had no hope of eternal life in prophecy. Paul could not have been saved into Israel's prophecy program, for it would have contradicted Christ's statements in Matthew 12 verses 31 and 32. But God showed Paul grace and committed the communication of a new dispensation in which he could have eternal life. Paul was the chief, leading sinner, the first sinner saved into the body of Christ, a pattern for those sinners who would hereafter believe and join our group, 1 Tim 1 15, 16. When on earth, Jesus Christ told the Jews to search the scriptures which testify of him and his coming, John 5 verse 39. Eternal life is in the person of Jesus Christ, believing who he is, what he did, and having his spirit in us. The mystery was unsearchable riches of Christ not revealed and could not be searched anywhere else in the Bible until Christ revealed it to Paul who preached it among the Gentiles and wrote about it. It was wise of God to not reveal all his word at the same time, but to reveal it progressively, so Satan could not know all the cards in God's hand all at once. 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. The fellowship of the mystery is that both Jews and Gentiles are saved into one group, the body of Christ. This purpose was hidden God, God the Father who created all things by Jesus Christ, kept this secret purpose in himself. The fellowship of the mystery was hidden God, not in the Old Testament. The all things are the levels of government in the two realms, heaven and earth. The mystery that was hidden God has now been revealed, made manifest. God wants all men and women to see, understand the fellowship of the mystery. But Satan wants to make sure nobody sees it, and he blinds people to the truth with false doctrine and religious traditions. Our job as his ambassadors is to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery, for this opportunity for eternal life only lasts until the rapture. It was a secret God kept from the beginning of the world that had been hidden God but is now revealed. Unlike man, God can keep a secret. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law, Deuteronomy. 29 colon 29, the Father in his great wisdom kept the mystery a secret and he created all things by Jesus Christ. The all things or levels of governmental authority in heaven and on earth are also mentioned in Colossians. Who, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, all things were created by him and for him, by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, Colossians 1 verses 15-19. Jesus Christ is the Creator, Colossians 1 verse 16, who said, Let there be light, Genesis 1 verse 3, men and angelic creatures will serve him forever. The same one who did wonders in Egypt and when on earth is in us. Tend to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, to the intent that now, beginning with Paul's salvation, God's manifold wisdom in his plan to defeat Satan and form the mystery has been revealed to powers and principalities in heavenly places. Not only are all men to see the mystery, but also principalities and powers in the heavenly places which are good and bad angels. The good and bad angels didn't know about the mystery. The manifold wisdom of God is revealed in his plan to keep secret the formation of the body of Christ. In this dispensation in which we live, the angels are not ministering to us in the dispensation of grace they are learning about God's manifold wisdom by watching the church, us.
The angels can observe how God took something that he formed out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, Genesis 2 verse 7, and made those beings who so easily failed into something glorious in his kingdom. The angels are curious to learn about God's plan to populate the heavenly places with a new group of these living souls made from the dust of the ground. It is God's wisdom to have the body of Christ ready to reign, rule, and replace the bad angels when Satan and his angels are cast out of the second heaven in the middle of the tribulation, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. Satan and his angels are doomed and destined for the lake of fire, Matt. 25 colon 41. The mighty and good angels know God will reclaim and restore all things. Only God is wise enough to use the rebellion of Lucifer, Satan, and Adam for his own advantage and solve man's sin problem so that he might fill all believers in two realms with the spirit of his own son. It was the manifold wisdom of God to redeem two groups of people by one cross through the sacrificial system. The Father redeemed all creation by one gigantic heroic sacrifice of his dear Son. Christ redeemed us from the power of sin, Satan, and death. Both groups will have eternal bodies and Christ's spirit in them, 316, Ja, 31, 31-34, Isaac, 36, 25, 26. What a glorious plan! 11 According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, it was the Father's plan since eternity past for Christ to die and pay with his blood so that his spirit could be in both the mortal and eternal heaven and earth believers and they could receive immortal bodies. The eternal purpose of God in Christ Jesus our Lord was to have two habitations or realms, heaven and earth, for Christ in one kingdom. The angels want to know more about the mystery part of the Father's eternal purpose, 1 9, 10, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord because information about the other part was already recorded in scripture. God the Father will reclaim and restore heaven unto himself using the body of Christ. 12 in whom, Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Notice that we have boldness and access with confidence to the Father by the faith of him which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ had the faith to go through with the Father's plan and go to the cross. We have boldness and access with confidence that we can come before the Holy Father because we have the promise of the Spirit of His Son. The Israel of God, Gal. 616, Peter's group, can approach God with the same boldness because they have His Spirit too. Acts 2 verses 36 to 38, Heb. 416, Jesus Christ had the faith to go through with the cruel cross so both groups could receive His Spirit. We are sons of God because we have the Son of God in us. Notice that it says the faith of Him. Jesus Christ came to live a perfect life fully trusting in and obedient to the will of God as revealed in the written word of God, PSA. 40 colon 7, 8. Jesus Christ was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Phil. 2 colon 8. This is the doctrine of the faith of Jesus Christ. When someone does not have a believing heart, to believe what God said in his word multiple times concerning the faith of him, then their denial of that fact will hurt and harm their deep understanding and detract or diminish from the incredible courage and obedience of Christ to the Father as he faithfully accomplished the Father's plan of redeeming two groups of people. Many proudly say that the Son is God and did not need faith and think they honor God, when in fact, what honors God is when we believe what he said. The scripture is clear that we are justified by the faith of Christ, Gal. 2.16, we either believe what God said, or we don't. If you do not accept this truth removed in all modern Bibles, then your understanding of Christ's accomplishment will be stunted and diminish. Jesus Christ trusted that the Father would accept his sacrifice for sin and raise him from the dead and give his spirit to the believers, John 17 verses 23 and 26, Gal. 3 colon 14 16. His perfect life, perfect faith, and perfect sacrifice are what? Make his righteousness available to us. When we believe the gospel of the grace of God, we are placed in him, 1 Cor. 12 13, 2 Cor. 5 21, Gal. 3 27, Colossians 2 verse 10. It is his faith and his righteousness which keep us secure. Unlike our faith, his is unwavering, and unlike our righteousness, his is perfect. Praise the Lord that our eternal security does not depend on our faith or righteousness, but on his. Modern Bibles change the faith of Jesus to faith in Jesus. Compare this verse in the New King James Bible or any other Bible even in foreign languages. 
If you have a Bible in a foreign language, it may be fine if it was. Translated from the King James Bible or the Textus Receptus. Modern Bibles are not the Word of God and are a complete waste of time. If you are able to read English, it is best to use a King James Bible. Our Bible study used to support a missionary who has translated the King James Bible into Lithuanian. I have an article on the King James Bible and another one on the faith of Jesus in the Appendix of God's Secret to help you. Or you can do some research the various Bibles on the internet. We can boldly come before God the Father as we commune with Him in prayer, or hear from Him in His Word. We know that we are accepted in the Beloved, 1 colon 6. We are confident because our salvation doesn't depend on our faith or righteousness, but on Christ's. We have access because of Christ's work of faith on Calvary, Gal. 2.16 The mystery of Christ is that Gentiles now have an opportunity of salvation apart from Israel. When Israel fell in Acts 7, God did not send his prophesied wrath, the tribulation, also known as Jacob's trouble, Je. 30 colon 7. God postponed his wrath and his kingdom on earth and inserted the dispensation of grace, Rom. 11 colon 11-13, 17, 25. The Gentiles, not the body of Christ, have been grafted into the olive tree, Rom. 11 colon 11-13, 17, 25. The olive tree represents access to God and Gentile opportunity for salvation and to receive his son's promised spirit. People who believe the gospel of God, summed up clearly in one core. 15 colon 3, 4, become members of the body of Christ and will live in heaven for eternity, 2 core. 5 colon 1, we are living during the nation of Israel's spiritual blindness, which is the Gentile opportunity for salvation. How will this dispensation end? Notice what Rom 11.22 says. This dispensation will be cut off because of unbelief. It does not end with revival, but in apostasy when no one else wants to trust Jesus Christ as his or her personal savior. After the rapture comes in the fullness of the Gentiles, Rom 11.25, the heavenly purpose God created us for. Then God will resume his dealings with Israel, Rom 11.26-29. Paul quotes Isaiah 59 verses 20 and 21 and Romans 11 verses 26 and 27 which is God's promised new covenant of his spirit to Israel. God will keep his promise to them, so replacement and covenant theology is wrong. The body of Christ has not replaced Israel. God has interrupted and postponed the prophecy program with Israel until after the rapture. Then Antichrist will rise to power, sign a treaty with Israel, which begins the last seven years of Daniel's timeline, and God will send the tribulation to Thess. 2 colon 7 10. After the tribulation, Jesus Christ will rule his kingdom on earth together with his 12 apostles and the kingdom of priests from the 12 tribes, Luke 12 verses 31 and 32, 22 30, Matt 1928, 2143, dot. 13 Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Paul did not want the believers to be discouraged by his imprisonment. Paul says he is in prison for their glory. Christ suffered for the gospel, but Paul suffered to make the gospel known, Colossians 1 verse 24. He told the Philippians that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, Phil. 1 12. It was because he was in prison that Paul needed to write the letter to the Ephesians so we can have the written word of Christ through him. Christ's word enriches us. Paul's writing while on house arrest to the body of Christ so we can understand the mystery is for our glory. 14 For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul bows his knees and prays to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says for this cause which is our part in the eternal purpose of the Father. 2 colon 19-22 311. Paul is thankful for another chance for eternal life. His eternal purpose is to have two groups of believers in eternity. Paul prays twice in the letter to the Ephesians, and the prayers are connected. Paul blessed the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 colon 3. Notice that by design Paul's first prayer is to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, 117, and his second prayer is to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 314. Remember that we said that he is both the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in the commentary on 1 colon 3. The first prayer is for spiritual enlightenment to know the Father and his plan. 
The second is for spiritual empowerment to comprehend his manifold wisdom and his plan for heaven and earth and the love of Christ to carry out the plan so they can be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul kneels and prays. Kneeling is the most common posture for prayer. Kneeling demonstrates submission and keeps us focused. Our physical posture is not what is important, but the submission of our hearts to the exalted position of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ as our head. Prayer is talking to God. We can pray any time, in any position, in any place. Paul said, pray without ceasing, 1 Thess. 517.15 of whom, Christ, the whole family in heaven and earth is named, the whole family in heaven and earth is the household, holy temple, and habitation of God, 2 19-22, are named after Christ both groups are Christians, Christ believers, Acts 26 verse 28, 1 Peter 4 verse 16. Both realms are in Christ, but both realms are not in the body of Christ. 16 that he, the Father, would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his, Christ's, spirit in the inner man. 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may 18 be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, and length, and depth, and height, 19 and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul received his power, 3 colon 7, of authority as his apostle by grace and by the Spirit, 3 colon 5. Christ's Spirit, of promise, in Paul was sufficient, 2 cor, 12 colon 9, so now Paul prays that the Father would grant the members of the body of Christ several spiritual things also, one, may be strengthened with power by his Spirit in the inner man, two, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, three, that ye may be rooted and grounded in love, and four, that we may comprehend with all the saints, in heaven and earth, what is the breadth, and length, and depth, and height of underscore, five, and that we may know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, six, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. What has four dimensions that Paul want them to comprehend? It cannot be the love of Christ, because he says, and the love of Christ, so what is it? It is the manifold wisdom of God, 310. Manifold means many in number, numerous, multiplied sides, many faceted, or dimensions. Paul wants the Father to grant them according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened by his spirit in our inner man, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1 verse 27. Paul wants Christ can dwell in our hearts by faith, so we can be rooted and grounded, grow and stand fast, in love, so we may be able to comprehend with all saints, all believers in heaven and earth, the breadth, and length, and depth, and height of the manifold wisdom of God, 310. We cannot understand these things without Christ's Spirit in our hearts. The Spirit of His Son is in our inner man, composed of our mind, spirit, and our heart, soul. What is it to be filled with all fullness of God? It means that by the Spirit to have understanding of all God's Word rightly divided. We can only believe as much of the Bible as we can understand, therefore Paul prays for us to comprehend what he said so we can be filled with all the fullness of God. Spiritual growth is required to know God and what he said, and what he has. Done, is doing, and will do, this is what right division is about. This is a prayer for empowerment while his first prayer was for enlightenment too. Understand the mystery of the Father's will. Paul wants the believers to have the power of Christ, 2 Cor. 12 colon 9, 10, to strengthen them, fill. For 13, just like he is. Paul prays that Lord Jesus Christ, in heaven, may dwell in the hearts of the believers by faith. There is nothing wrong with Peter's ministry, it is just that his earthly ministry was not written to the body of Christ. Today, Christ is building the church the body of Christ through the gospel and doctrine that he gave to Paul. Christ demonstrated his love for all creation on Calvary, Rom. 5 colon 8, his spirit in us needs verses from his living word to operate. We are rooted and grounded in love for God and others. We let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, Colonel 2 colon 7, 316. As we walk by faith in an intelligent understanding of the word of God rightly divided, then one of the automatic fruit of his spirit in us is love, Gal 5 22. The love of Christ is that he endured the cruel cross and the agony of the second death, separation from God for us. He cried, my God, my God, 
Why hast thou forsaken me? Psalm 22 verse 1, so that we will never have to. That is true love, the love of Christ. It was his love for us that kept Christ on the cross and made him bear our sins and die the death we deserved. He did it out of love. The love of Christ on Calvary is beyond our knowledge, Paseth knowledge. We love him because he first loved us. He knew all about my failings and shortcomings. There is nothing I am going to do that is going to surprise or shock him. How can I not love someone that loved me like that? We are eternally grateful for his sacrifice and as we learn more about God we love him more. We are eternally secure and nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Rom. 835, all fullness dwells in Christ, 123, Colossians 1 verse 19, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 2 verse 9. When we are filled with Christ we are filled with the Godhead. His love for us compels us to want to serve him, 2 Cor. 514, 20 now unto him, the Father, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, 21 unto him, the Father, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. What a prayer! Paul again shows us by example that it is not enough to share the truth, but we must pray for others to understand it. Paul closes his prayer in a great crescendo. Paul knows that the Father is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that he or we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, his spirit in us revealing his word of instruction to us. The power that worketh in us, 320, is Christ, his indwelling spirit, strengthened by might by his spirit in the inner man, 316. The Father can do more in answer to this prayer, therefore, unto God the Father be glory in the church, the body of Christ, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, forever and ever, amen. He knows that the Father is able to do exceedingly abundantly, notice the superlatives, above all, notice the hyperbole, that we ask or think. The Father can do above all that we ask or think because we have Christ's Spirit in us. Elisha in the Old Testament asked for a double portion of the Spirit Elijah had. But we have the entire power station in us. The Creator lives in us. We have the power of His Spirit in our inner man. 316. His life in us is our power source. Therefore, although the Son of God is sitting at the right hand of the Father, He is manifesting Himself to the world by His Spirit through the believers. Jesus Christ lives in every believer, 2 Cor. 4 colon 7, 10, 11. We can say with Paul, Christ liveth in me, Gal. 2 20. And when we know Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 16 25, His word to us, 2 Tim. 2 colon 7, then we can function like the adult sons the Father made us to be. We are the sons of God because we have the Son of God in us. God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Gal. 4 colon 6, Paul wants the Father to be glorified in the church by Christ Jesus for all ages, world without end, for eternity. The Father has an amazing plan for us now and in the future in the heavenly places, 2 colon 7, Rom. 818, 1 Cor. 2 colon 9. Unto the Father be glory in the church by Christ Jesus for his manifold wisdom and his eternal purpose and plan for heaven and earth, forever. Paul has helped us to know the Father better in this letter, which elevates our understanding of God's wisdom to us in the mystery to another level, the dispensation of the grace of God, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3 verse 9 KJB 1 1 COR 15 colon 1 4 F 2 colon 8 9 KJB. Ephesians 3 verse 6 KJB. 6 That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Colossians 1 verse 27 KJB. 27 To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The church which is his body Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles Romans to Philemon. Keep looking up. Which mystery? The mysteries for the kingdom of heaven, Matt. 1311, on earth has nothing to do with the mystery of the body of Christ. The phrase kingdom of heaven is only found in Matthew and occurs 32 times. It is as the kingdom. 
This kingdom is as the days of heaven upon the earth, Deuteronomy. 1121, when Jesus Christ was on earth, after he had been accused of using the power of Satan, he began to speak in parables so only the believing remnant of Jews, the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, could understand him, Matt. 13 colon 3, 11. His seven parables in Matthew chapter 13 describe events during the tribulation and at his second coming. 1. The sower one-fourth will preach the word of God, the gospel of the kingdom. 2. Tares and wheat there will be counterfeit believers in the tribulation. At Christ's second coming when the angels collect and burn the tares. 3. Mustard seed Satan is working in Israel. 4. Leaven false teaching will spread during the tribulation. 5. Hidden treasure Israel is scattered around the world but the Son of God gave all that he had and bought the field, the world, where they are hidden. 6. The pearl of great price it is worth sacrificing everything in order to get into the kingdom. 7. Net the good fish, believers, were gathered into vessels, believers, to enter the kingdom and the bad, unbelievers, were cast away at the end of the world. All Christ's teachings, signs, and miracles while on earth point to his earthly kingdom, not his heavenly group. Christ did the signs of the kingdom, he healed and cast out devils, Matt. 4.23 24, as prophesied in Isaiah 35 3-7.